Hi there, welcome to the new video. So today I'll be going through this very interesting paper which is titled as Todd Bird, Pre-Training Natural Language Understanding for Task-Oriented Dialogues. So this is from researchers from Salesforce Research and it's a pretty recent paper as in October 2020. So here TOD essentially stands for Task-Oriented Dialogue and this paper talks about introducing a new pre-training objective based on BERT for task-oriented chatbot or dialogue systems. So let's read the abstract. The underlying difference of linguistic patterns between general text and task-oriented dialogue makes existing pre-trained language models less useful in practice. So yeah, this is pretty true because if you train a language model by giving it some general text that could be from book or from Wikipedia, so those are pretty open-ended and topic agnostic texts. So there is no concept of something like a dialogue should go in certain format to meet certain criteria, which usually happens in task-oriented dialogue systems. So if you can think of systems like that help you make flight reservations, that help you make movie reservations. So all of those systems essentially try to drive a conversation in a certain way so that they know enough about a person and the relevant properties to make a successful booking. For example, in case of flight booking service, the dialogue would be going in such a fashion where the system would be asking about your personal information such as name, age and gender. And eventually you will be giving all of those things and then you will be having some transaction state, the booking will be done. So there is a specific flow, how a system is designed, which any user will have to follow to make this successfully happen. So that is the difference what the authors are talking about. So the pre-trained language model, what we have these days, such as BERT and GPT, are usually trained on some open text, such as Wikipedia, Common Crawl, where there is not much task-oriented dialogues that are going on. So that's why it's not straightforward to use those kind of systems which we already have these days and directly apply them to dialogue based systems. So this is where the paper introduces a novelty of introducing a new objective functions that works really well if you have task oriented dialogue based systems. Okay. So they propose a contrastive objective functions to simulate the response selection task. So we'll see shortly to what contrastive objective function is. So their system outperforms strong baseline like BERT on four downstream task-oriented dialogue applications, such as intent recognition, dialogue state tracking, response selection, and so on. Okay, so let's move forward and see the method. So authors have pre-trained BERT on nine different dialogue datasets. So these are all those datasets with total of around 100,000 dialogues or sessions, where each session would have n number of utterances. So these are the total number of utterances across all the dialogue sets that they have and they have it for multiple number of domains. So yeah, this is a pretty huge data set on which they essentially pre-train their BERT model with the MLM and the contrastive loss objective. So all of these data sets are in English language and are conversations between humans and humans. So there is no bot involved and are multi-turn in nature. So which means a specific intent might be fulfilled over a period of time in a dialogue over multiple utterances. So this is not something like a single shot model where you ask a question and it returns some factual answer, which means you'll have the privilege to go back and forth in terms of referencing two different contexts at any point in the dialogue. Okay. So now let's see the objectives. So they train the Todd BERT model, which is based on BERT architecture with two loss functions. The first is the MLM loss, which is nothing but mass language modeling. The next one is the response contrastive loss, which they call as RCL. They build on top of BERT based uncased model where you have 12 layers and 12 attention head per layer and the hidden dimension size is 768. So as in during inference, if you pass any sentence on the output end, you'll be getting a 768 dimension representation of a word or maybe of the CLS token that represents the entire sequence. Okay. So since the data set is about dialogues, so there has to be a user and a system or user one or user two types of utterances. So they define it as special tokens as users and sys. So authors add this prefix to each of the user's utterance and the system responses and then concatenate all the utterances of the same dialogue into a flat sequence. So this is the format that you'll get where D is the dialogue and S is the system response, U is the user response and you have N number of dialogue terms. Okay, so what they mean is, so let's say you have a dialogue D. The first question was let's say asked by system, then user response to that, then again system follows it back then again user response and let's say this happens n times where you have un and sn. So what they do is for system response they have a prefix sys which they append to the utterance that was set by the system at this position and for user they have 
USR I believe yeah so it is USR and then again they add the utterance segment that was said in this line and you do it for all the n sequences and then you concatenate to make a flat list of system user system user kind of pairs so then this represents one dialog okay so exactly that's what they have written and this goes as an input to your BERT model now so on this now the objectives that they apply is the mass language modeling which is a common pre-training objective which original BERT also uses so the idea of MLM is let's say you have a dialogue and they have already flattened it out into n tokens where you have s1 u1 s2 u2 and then sn un all of this goes to your BERT model and you randomly mask certain tokens from this input let's say you mask this and this and at the output end you'll have to predict what those mask things were based on other words that happen to be in that sequence and then you calculate cross entropy across both these words and you back propagate by which you adjust the weights of all the layers that happen to be in this BERT architecture so this is mass language modeling so this is the loss function what we just saw where p is the probability of getting a mass sequence xm on the output end and you do it for all the m words that were masked in that sequence you add all of that and that is your total loss that you back propagate so the higher value that you get for p of xm the lower will be the loss because now your model is more confident in terms of predicting what should be occurring at that position of the mass token so yeah that is the entire idea so the next loss that they propose is called response contrastive loss which is used to essentially capture the underlying dialogue sequential order structural information and the response similarity so contrastive losses are usually applied in the scenarios we are trying to find the similarity between two input samples such as in the case of face verification task where you have a new image let's say n and you have a database of 10 images for example so given a new image n you want to find which is the most similar image from this set of 10 images so the way you train the model in this case would be you have an image n1 you have an image n2 you pass it through a model let's say a cnn model that gives you a feature vector at the end so this is again the similar cnn model which means the weights are same so at this stage you have a feature vector f1 for the image n1 and similarly you have feature vector f2 for the image f2 you use both of these representation and calculate some kind of similarity measure it could be cosine similarity if you're dealing with high dimensions or it could simply be a square distance based on this you back propagate the error and you adjust the weights of your CNN model such that the feature representations that you learn which are F1 and F2 are really good. So if the images are close by then the feature vectors in a certain space of let's say k dimension should be close enough and if the images are very distinct then the points in that space should be really far. So this is the entire idea of the contrastive loss. So what we just discussed is known as Siamese network. So yeah in this case also authors are using this loss to learn a good representation for the CLS token such that if the response in the context are very similar then they should represent almost similar embeddings in a certain space and if they are not very similar then they should be really far in that space okay they first draw a sample of batch of all the dialogues so considering a batch has b number of dialogues they split each of the dialogues at some random position let's say t so now any dialogue can be divided into two segments one is the context that happens to be occurring before the cut t the next segment is the response that just occurs at t plus one step so they use the taught bird to encode all the context and the corresponding responses separately which means they pass in the context and the responses one by one to the bird model and capture the cls embedding for each of them so since the batch had b number of samples so c will be of b cross db size where c is the context matrix with b number of rows because you have b number of samples in that batch and then db is of size 768 because the cls embedding output 768 dimension representation in a bird based architecture so you have b cross 768 then similarly you make a response matrix which is again b cross 768 then the rcl objective function is defined by this equation so as we can see it is dependent on m m is nothing but the product of c and r matrices which results in a b cross b matrix so c as we know is b cross 768 and r transposes again 768 cross b so it results in a b cross b matrix where the rows are now nothing but the context and columns represent b responses across all the different dialogues that we have sampled then you apply the softmax function which is applied independently at each row which essentially normalizes each of the row vectors from 0 to 1 
then the resultant matrix what you get is what they call as m so now this m then gets feed into the rc equation which you calculate for all the b samples that you have in that batch and as we can see you go from i is equal to 1 to b log of m i i which means you are traversing diagonally in that matrix and originally every diagonal would be termed as 1 because that was the actual response for that context so now you are trying to evaluate how much your model essentially captures that information by trying to push it more towards 1 so in an ideal scenario you would want all the diagonal elements to be peaked towards 1 and rest all of the values in that row to be going towards 0 so if you are tending towards that case then your loss will be relatively very low because now your model has learned to say something as correct with very high probability if it was correct so yeah, this is the entire idea of the loss of RCL. Moving forward. So this is the bigger picture that the authors have given. You give your model an input of all the flattened sequence that we've just seen, where you prepend CLS token and append separator token at the end. You also have the system and user special tokens that you insert pre any starting of that particular utterance. You pass it through a bird, you have 12 layers. And at the output end, you predict the mass token from where you calculate the cross entropy which is the MLM loss and also you have the RCL loss which tries to more or less capture the similarity between the response and the context okay so yeah that was the entire method that they have discussed about the two losses and finally the aggregated loss what they propagate backwards is a weighted sum of MLM and RCL okay so talking about the downstream task where they evaluated their taught bird the first one was the intent recognition which is a multi-class classification problem where you have a sentence u and your model has to predict one of the intents from possible set of intents. So intent recognition and entity recognition are two very common tasks when you're working with chatbots because you want to understand the intent behind a particular sentence that a user writes because based on that your model will be choosing next set of actions or questions to ask for. So yeah, it is usually formulated as a classification problem where you're given a sentence and your model has to predict the underlying intent. So you have a sentence u, you pass it through the pretend BERT model, which is the f function over here. So f of u gives you an embedding of 768 dimension. Then you pass this feature vector to the linear function where you learn a weight w1, which is of 768 cross i dimension, where i is the number of intents that you have. So once you multiply both of these matrix, you'll be getting 1 cross i, which is a distribution across all the intents that you have. You apply softmax to normalize them between 0 and 1, and whichever has the highest is your final intent. So yeah, in this case, you essentially train the network that you append post the feature vector for learning the weight W1. F is already learned and dumped. So you train via cross entropy loss to update the W1 matrix. So yeah, this was one of the tasks that the authors have tested out. The next was dialogue state tracking and similarly dialogue act prediction, which is again a multi-class classification problem. We have a sentence X, you pass it through the BERT model, you get an embedding. You again learn a linear mapping function apply sigma to squash the values between 0 and 1 to get a binary label so 0 0.5 is the value above which you say it is 1 or if it goes below 0 0.5 you say it is 0 so that is a threshold then you have response selection where you try to kind of output a response that is very similar to the context so again you pass that context to your BERT model you get the CLS embedding vector you pass each candidate sentence to the BERT model you get its representation then you calculate some kind of similarity function in a space of r of 1 so higher the score that y is your answer so yeah then they have evaluations and results so i guess we are done with the paper now so yeah one last thing as we can see they have this all of the intents like hotel booking train taxi attraction and restaurant so this is the embedding that you get after applying some dimensionality reduction for every sentence that exhibited that intent so as we can see there is a lot of overlapping happening there is no clear distinctions to what clusters belong to each of the intents now if you do a toward bird mlm based objective then we can start to see some of the clusters being happening which are a bit dominated by a certain intent so here as we can see blue is dominating more here we can see red is dominating so a little bit of clarity is now coming into the picture and when you apply a joint loss of mlm as well as the rcl we can see clear distinction among the intent sentences so like all of this belongs to restaurants all of this belongs to trains you have this for taxi, you have this for attractions, which essentially is hinting towards like we have learned a better representation for the sentences in terms of clustering based on the intents, which was initially not happening for the CLS vector that we were getting from the BERT model. 
which was trained on NSP and the MLM laws together. So yeah, the laws what they have proposed seems to be working. So I guess we are done with the paper now. So yeah, if you like such content, do make sure to hit that like button and share it across with your friends. So I was thinking to keep a target for likes this time. So let's try to target 30 likes for this video. So make sure if you have not liked it yet, do press that like button. I'll meet you in the next one. Bye.